Hi everyone, you're watching Ancient Payment, and today we will be taking a look at the Roman Antoninianus, a fascinating denomination that circulated in the Roman Empire for nearly a century. To help illustrate how the Antoninianus has changed over time, I have prepared this infographic, which I will walk through in a second. I will make this file available in the description below. If you happen to find any information which you feel is incorrect or needs to be changed, just shoot me a message and I'll take a look at it. Apologies for the long intro, let's get into the history. The Antoninianus was first produced under Caracalla in around 215 AD. This is actually where the name of the Antoninianus comes from, as Caracalla's original name was Antoninus. Caracalla inherited a changing Roman Empire in which the silver content of its denarius was rapidly decreasing. Caracalla was faced with a financial crisis following the murder of his only brother Gaeta in 212. In order to ensure the loyalty of the Roman army, Caracalla promised his soldiers a 50% pay increase. Caracalla attempted to pay for this in two ways. First, he increased tax revenue. Second, he further debased the currency and introduced the Antoninianus, which was tariffed at around 2 denarii. The Antoninianus was minted until 222 when Alexander Severus became emperor. Severus is believed to have thought that he was restoring the integrity of the Roman monetary system by halting production of the Antoninianus. It would not be until 238 when Puppianus and Balbinus, hungry for cash to fund their wars against Maximinus, would again mint the Antoninianus. After these two men were killed by the Praetorian Guard following a brief 99 day reign, Gordian III ascended the throne. Gordian III produced the coin in much greater numbers than his predecessors, but never again would the Antoninianus be produced with the same quality as it had been in previous time. Gordian reduced the weight of the coin by around 10%, in addition to scaling back the denomination's silver content to around 40%. By 258, at the end of Valerian's reign, perhaps partially caused by his expensive campaigns against the Parthians, the coin had crept down to around 20% silver. And under Gallienus, Valerian's son, and Claudius II, the silver content of the Antoninianus continued to diminish. Some of the Antoniniani minted during the 260s represent the absolute low point in terms of Antoninianus silver content. Oftentimes, coins minted in a base metal material were washed in silver to give them an appearance of value. During this time, another major factor contributing to the decrease in silver content of the Antoninianus and just general inflation were the numerous usurpers and secessionist states popping up across the empire. In the case of the Britannic and Gallic empires especially, these usurpers minted coins that were highly debased. And as these debased coins were dispersed by trade throughout the Roman world, in addition to the already highly debased Antoniniani in circulation, the need for reform was obvious. Aurelian, a brilliant military leader who became emperor in 270, attempted to reform the denomination. He reconquered lands seized by secession estates in both the east and the west, and proceeded to set silver content back at 5%. This new reformed version of the Antoninianus is sometimes called the Aurelianianus, after Emperor Aurelian. This is also the time period in which the markings XXI and KA in the East appeared on these coins. Numismatists and historians still have not agreed on what the XXI or the KA stands for, but most have come to a consensus that the XXI stands for a ratio of 20 to 1 or 4.76% silver. The coins of this time generally contain about 4-5% silver, so this theory has been widely accepted as a possibility. The Antoninianus was struck until 293 AD and then gradually phased out by the monetary reforms under the Emperor Diocletian during the Tetrarchy. This is when other denominations such as the Phallus appeared. This has been Ancient Payment with a brief history of the Antoninianus. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos about ancient numismatics and history.